What's up, everybody? Zach here with Nerd Cave. Today is episode 230 of our wonderful podcast. I'm joined by myself and only myself. So you're going to get to hear my docile voice reading the news, stumbling over words and all of that good stuff. Thanks to everybody for this awesome weekend. We had a great community game night, uh, game day actually, and we had a lot of fun. So thank you all for all the ones that came out and supported us there. We are doing the show live, uh, but we won't be taking questions till the very end, uh, but we will be covering a ton of topics this week. So if you want to get all of this early, have, all you have to do is go to patreon.com slash nerdcave, throw us a few dollars, make Robbie holler, insert Robbie's hollering voice, and you can get the podcast early. We stream each and every week to our patrons, and on the last week of the month, we stream to everybody. So this is what's happening this week is everybody's getting this show for free and on live. Uh, so if you want to get the edited version with all the nice, clean audio and all that good stuff, all you got to do is go over to patreon.com and you can check out our awesome let's plays that we put up a week early for our Patreon supporters, or you can wait a week. That's okay too. And we segment our podcast each and every day and we put up a part of it every day. So gaming goes in the first part of the week, movies and news goes at the end of the week. And then on Friday, we put up the whole thing for everybody around the globe on podcast services and YouTube. So let's get into the news this week. We got a lot to talk about. Sony's Paris Games Week pre-show to highlight 21 games. Sony has provided some additional info about its upcoming Paris Game Week, which is taking place somewhere in Europe on Monday. This person's being funny. The show officially starts at 9 a.m. Pacific, but there's going to be a pre-show live stream that looks like it's definitely going to be worth tuning into. According to Sony, there will be revealing info on 21 games starting at 8 a.m. Pacific, including seven all-new uh, announcements for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation VR. Once that hour is all done, the actual event begins. So uh, there's going to be a ton of news that comes from that. Um... I'm figuring that most of those seven games that haven't been announced yet are actually going to be PSVR games. That's where we're going to get most of that info from. Um, but I think that one of the games, at least out of that seven, is going to be straight up a big title. Like it's going to be something that is something like we want to hear about. Um, but. PlayStation said that this is going to be that E3 was only the first half, um, the first half of this and everything. So we're going to see a ton of info, which makes me feel like um, we're going to be getting less at PSX this year, which is interesting because PSX is definitely the the fan service and everything, but. Paris Game Week has definitely taken a back seat in the recent years. Uh, so it's interesting that they're making the focus here uh, on bigger games and everything. But I think a lot of it is definitely those seven announcements of those games are going to be mostly PlayStation VR. Um, but what I think place the Paris Game Week is going to be is E3 was the first half of 2018. This is going to be the second half of 2018. I think if they're showing stuff that is in 2019, they're doing it wrong. I think that should be in at PSX. Um, instead of Paris Games Week. So I think they need to fill out the rest of the timeline that is 2018 before they get into the next part of the year. I think, I mean, the next year, because uh, we've got the first part of the year. We've got, you know, Spider-Man and all of that. I think that we see them fill out the rest of it. And I, it's interesting, you know, we haven't really seen anything from Sucker Punch. So I think we see what Sucker Punch is doing that might be the big game the seventh game that they show and then that kicks into the next part of the the show the actual event and that they start talking about sucker punch's game which i think putting sucker punch in the pre-show would be a little kind of a slight in a way because sucker punch is such a big company uh but it could also be media molecule with our game dream uh which we haven't heard a lot about in a while and i'm kind of scared that dream is not going to be coming out or it might be uh they might have shifted and made it like a playstation vr game since that's the new tech that is out right now but 
VR, as we all know, hasn't really sold a ton. So it's going to be interesting to see. So that is going to actually be, if you're watching this segment, is going to be on Monday or today when this releases. Uh, so I'm curious to see what all PlayStation is going to announce, see what is coming out the next half, see if my predictions are right. Uh, but I see... I think we're going to see a lot of first party stuff. We don't see a lot of third party uh, talk here. We're going to see lots and lots of first party to fill out the rest of 2018 and then maybe just a slight hint to 2019. But we also have the Game Awards, which is next month, which is in November. And then December is PSX. So I think they do that sort of thing. If I, last. Um, Last of Us was actually announced at uh, the Game Awards. So I don't think we see something like that uh, on this one. I think they focus on 2018 and not 2019. Uh, so moving into the next one, I'm having to do all of this by myself. And sorry if the stream is lagging, everybody. Um, Gears of War 4's October update brings new maps, Halloween event, and Xbox One X support. Uh, the large update is coming to Gears of War 4, which introduces two new maps, Xbox One X supports, and ushers in the Halloween event. The Xbox One X arrives on store shelves this November, and the Coalition says it's preparing to bring support to the game as we le lead up to its launch by allowing players to pre-download 4K files. Wow. 4K files. While the coalition didn't give specifics on what Xbox One X enhancements were, uh, we can look forward to the team says that they'll be providing more information very soon. The coalition, however, went into detail about what kind of maps and the other content we'll see coming with the game as of next week. The two maps are Lift Apex and Fuel Depot. Fuel Depot is a map that was featured in the first Gears of War and Gears of War 2. Uh, now is now this large warehouse setting makes its return. Lift Apex is also inspired by an earlier map. It's set in an emulsion extraction facility in the middle of Sereno Ocean. Uh, these two maps can be played by season pass holders on October 23rd, whereas all other players can join on October 30th. Um, so that's, I, I love to see that they're actually supporting this game, that they're continually making more updates for it. Uh, and of course, you have season passes, so you have to do that. But it's nice to see that Gears is going to be supported. Uh, the 4K files, it's those, I, I'm curious to see how that all works. Like the Xbox One X is supposed to be the most powerful console out right now, and all of that. Uh, it's going to be, Interesting to see how that works uh, with the 4K files and all of that. Uh, I'd see that eating up a ton of space on your hard drives. Um, and I can't remember off the top of my head what the uh, the hard drive size on the Xbox One X. I can, I'm assuming it's going to be a terabyte or so. Um, but I'm looking forward to seeing what the game looks like in 4K. Um, but I'm glad to see that they're putting in those uh, those game and that support in the game. The Fuel Depot was one of my favorite maps from Gears 1 and 2, so I'm glad to see it coming back. Will I play it? Probably not. I'm kind of over Gears at this point. The story in the fourth one wasn't that good to me. All I cared about was making sure Marcus was alive, uh, and he was, so that's all that matters to me. Uh, Evil Within 2. You can play all of Evil Within 2's PC version in first person mode. The Evil Within 2 is a much larger game than the first, featuring some new scares, as well as bigger playground to be to be terrified in. If walking around these tense environments while waiting for a zombie to spot you isn't scary enough, however, uh, and you have a PC version of the game, you can play it entirely in first person. It will take some extremely light modding to make it work, though, as PC Gamer details, if you right-click the game, and you can all look all of this up, um, but I've seen some gameplay of this, and this is one game that I do want to play. Um, making it just first-person mode would make it scarier, in my opinion, uh, just because uh, being able to spot zombies or being able to like turn the camera around when you're running away, um, it, it, it definitely heightens that sense, but if you're just first person, it definitely makes it more like Resident Evil 7, uh, where you're just, you're, you're right there in that horror and everything. So I kind of like that. I wish they would have made the game that way, but I understand that the, the character that they have in there is definitely a bigger character, uh, than what was in 7, which you got to know Ethan and all of that, uh, throughout that. But it's interesting with just a little bit of modding, you could do that if you got the PC version. Uh, um, 
Next up, Dragon Ball Fighter Z release date season pass details have been announced. We all know how I feel about season passes. Uh, Bandai Namco has announced that Dragon Ball Z, Fi Dragon Ball Fighter Z, is coming to U.S. on January 26th for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. And the company has also dropped details on the game season pass. The pass grants gamers eight additional characters who each come with a stamp. Lobby avatars and alternate colors. The pass is priced at $39.99, but Bandai Nemco says it will announce the pass characters in the future because they don't know what they're putting in there. That's all the only reason. Or they're trying to heighten it, but they probably don't know what it's in there. Um, now, Dragon Ball Fighter Z, uh, when we saw that uh, at E3 this past year, it's a very interesting game. Um, but I like I don't I have no problems with it. It looks like it would be a lot of fun to play at parties or you know just as like let's plays or whatever. Um, it's definitely showing that the latest games didn't do well that they abandoned that pretty quickly after the second game. Uh, you look at Budokai, Budokai they kept that formula for a very long time. Budokai two we're not going to talk about. I didn't like the game board that they had going on, um, but. It, it just shows that this the creating the character and all of that uh, and you got to go through the different timeline it it didn't work uh, so I think they're trying to get into the market you've got Tekken that just came out you have the Street Fighter game that just came out Capcom just came out and then we have another Dragon Ball Z game coming out so it definitely shows that they're trying to get into that market where it's more of an eSport uh, so I, I, I'm glad that they're finally putting a date on it I can't wait to play it um, but making it where characters are behind a paywall after you buy the whole game, it's again, uh, Jim Sterling talks about this, the myth of a $60 game is there, definitely there, that $60 games don't exist anymore. You have to get the deluxe version to get the season pass to get the rest of the game. And it, it is you know, what it is at this point uh, in time to make, make sure that there's single-player games or games like that. But it's also annoying because... I just want the game. I just want to pay sixty dollars and get the full game. But whatever. If 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 the games market wouldn't lie about oh all the games are sixty dollars at this point, just raise the prices and just give me the full game. Like just just stop doing that. Just stop lying to us. Microsoft announces mixer integration within Minecraft. I get very passionate about uh, microtransactions and all of that. Sorry about that. Uh, Mixer, formerly known as Beam, before its acquisition by Microsoft and Minecraft, Microsoft's most recent expense expensive acquisition are joining forces for a new level of integration with mixer minecraft streamers can now integrate any command in the game into their stream for viewers to hit at their leisure want your viewers to summon zombie archers it's a click away uh want them to summon creepers for that matter it i wouldn't recommend it but it's your stream and mixer is now letting you do it this is similar to twitch integration in some games that allows people to cheer or to rally a main character's health but is much more granular and fundamental level the process will start working with minecraft on pc and android and will come to xbox one later this year all versions of minecraft that support mixer will be getting it once it exits beta including minecraft vr minecraft is also testing its better together update Date, which came to the PC, mobile, and Xbox One earlier this year. The update will uh, be coming to Nintendo Switch later and allows crossplay across all versions. And the one company that isn't going to have better together is Sony because they don't want people playing together. Uh, and that's okay. Um, I just wish they would admit that. Uh, with this, I think it's cool, you know, letting people have more. Um, more things to do while people stream like you know i would i would do that for some games that i had if it was integrated and everything let letting people you know interact more with an actual physical thing just like when we were playing jackbox party pack uh even if you weren't in the actual game the audience could play along by making lies up and fit it fibbage and all of that or voting on lies and all that sort of stuff so i thought it was just interesting that another service other than twitch is getting more um audience base where it's more of that integration and everything so and with minecraft being such a huge thing it just makes sense